What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are done with day two at the CrossFit Games. I'm going to talk about men's, then women, then the teams. Yesterday we had three events where the athletes got cut all the way down to 20 athletes. I'll be honest, as an athlete this probably sucks getting cut down so much, but as a fan this has probably been the best like games in a very long time because we've had big cuts, people leaving so early, there's drama, like it's just more entertaining I think as a fan to watch good athletes get cut because you have to be so consistent. Event number one, Ruck. 6,000 meter Ruck run, every 1,500 meters you add weight. Men and women have the exact same weight. On the men's side, Lucas Hogberg comes out with the win, obviously needed to boost him back up the leaderboard. In second, Joshua Witcher, and in third place, Aldiz Alp... Oh God, I can't even pronounce the name. Aldiz Alpinokas. Yes. Then by James Newbury and Jacob Hepner, which boosted them back up the leaderboard. Then this got cut down to the top 40 athletes. We're losing Guillermo from Brazil, Mohamed Omda from Egypt, some very good athletes. We then also lost Ronshaw Okowicz, who came second in the second cut. So a very good athlete, he's out. So we're seeing big cuts straight away. First event, boom, athlete's gone. Event number two was the sled coupler. The sprint coupler. The sprint coupler. Whereas 172 feet sled push, then you have 18 bar muscle ups for men, 15 for women, and then that sled push back. Very surprising on this workout how the guys played off. I think it was a very good couplet testing your capacity to sprint and your capacity of gymnastics under that sprint. Matt McCloyd with a very good win under his belt, racking up that 100 points, followed by Noah Olsen and Will Morad boosting them back up the leaderboard. Now Noah Olsen has a bit of momentum going into the final event of the day. But what was surprising about these two events? One, Matt Fraser came 21st. Yes, he came 21st in an event. What? But this isn't Fraser. Anyway, 21st in the event on the, on the sprint cup. Like, I don't know about you, but I was very shocked with that. I couldn't believe it. I was. <laughs> Since when does Fraser come out of the top 10? Showing a good weakness. After that, he got deducted points on Ruck by a whole minute because a bag fell out of his Ruck and he got deducted points. In a video, you see him look back, but I honestly don't think he meant to do it. I just think he felt it was a bit off and just carried on running because Matt Fraser would go and pick it up. He's not that stupid to make a mistake, but. He was stupid enough to not tie his bag up like everyone else. Then as a result, he went from fifth all the way to 17th. So Matt Fraser, after four events, first, first, 17th, 21st, like this is the most inconsistent Fraser we've ever seen. Whereas even if with the ruck run, it would have been first, first, fifth, 21st. So big weakness. Final workout of the day was Mary. 20 minute AMRAP of five handstand push-ups, 10 pistol squats and 15 pull-ups. Noah. Olsen absolutely kept it consistent, looked like he wasn't even trying towards the end of the event, beat Matt Fraser by two reps. So I'm beating Matt Fraser. Even the top four went Noah Olsen, Matt Fraser, Jacob Hepner, Scott Panchin. And at the end of the day, this isn't your top four athletes. Noah Olsen, Matt Fraser, it's Jacob Hepner, Scott Panchin. Very surprised. Matt Fraser is not on top of the leaderboard by five points. So Matt Fraser not in first place after two days. This is something we're not used to as athletes or something we're not used to as spectators because Matt Fraser has dominated the scene over the past three years. So I think the point scheme and the way the structure has been has given it more of a level playing field to see Fraser's weaknesses and the way it's been structured in terms of events has found his weaknesses again. That way we, it's more entertaining for us to watch as a sport. But here are your top 10 athletes. We have Noah Olsen, Matt Fraser, Jacob Hepner, Scott Panchik, Adrian Mamwala, James Manubri, Will Morad, Yorkman Carl Goodmanson, Matt McCloyd, Patrick Vellner. Not bad as a top 10. Some people that I didn't thought would be there would probably be, I didn't expect James Newbury to do this well and Scott Panchik to be up there that early. Even Matt McCloy, I've not even heard this guy in terms of on a games level, heard of him on a lower level, but not at a games level being with the top athletes. This was very surprising for me, probably for everyone else. So the point scheme has changed a lot this year and this is something that we've not seen before. And they've made a few mistakes and a few changes. So I was gonna make this video last night, but I'm glad I didn't because the changes were made where Willie Georges, he's out of competition. Casper Gammon, I can't even pronounce his name. And Casper Gammon is in 
by the skin of it, his teeth, literally one point, Casper made it into the top 20. This is really big, first game's appearance, beating such big guys as Willie Georges, which is shown to be one of the best in the world. So I'm so surprised, but life goes on, he's gonna be okay. Also big cuts that we've seen already. I would say the biggest two is Ben Smith and Brett Fikowski. People that we'd expect to try and get to the podium, even if Ben did get a wild card, X Games X champion, you'd expect him to be there, but they're out. This is what's crazy about the format. You're gonna see big athletes out of competition like that, which I love the most. Let's move on to the women. After day number one, Tia Clara Toomey took the women's leaderboard as we expect, but some, 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 I can't get this right. Some surprises from other women on top of the top five, which I was not expecting, but some very good athletes, which at least the format has suited them very well. On the rock run, I was very surprised. For thinking Sam Briggs would win, she actually come fourth, and Emily Roll, Emily Rolfe, I wanna say that's right. Good for you, and Rolfies. Anyway, Tia Clara Toomey came second, and Christian Holt came third. Christian Holt is doing a very good job at sticking at the top, sticking with the big guns, and I think she has a very good chance of podium. The sprint cup, Amanda Barnhart with a win under her belt, which we expected a little bit of her doing well after the second cup, and she said she loves anything handstand style related, so expecting her to do well, but not this well. She is currently sitting sick overall after the day number two with this win under our belt. It's made a big, big difference. Something I was very surprised at is Tia Clara Toomey came 12th. I was expecting her to a little bit, be a little bit better. Correlation here between her and Matt Fraser being bad at an event. They train together, maybe they're not doing something in their training, I don't know. Try not to speculate, but anyway. And then finally Mary at the end of the day. A big, big win for Kerry Pitts. Absolutely smashed it. She did most of her handstand push up strict. Like, I saw the event and I'm like, this girl is insane. Don't get me wrong, her arms are the size of my hand, like lengthwise, but absolutely insane. Deserved the win, absolutely smashed everyone out of the field. Clearly was gonna win start to finish, and absolutely unbelievable event. As a result, she came second overall after day two. So I'm super happy for her, I'm glad she's doing well, and absolutely smashing it to try and earn her first time being on the podium. Another person doing incredibly well is Jamie Green sitting in fourth place behind Christian Holt. I'm very surprised that she's doing this well this early and how she's battling for that podium spot. She's behind by 25 points, which is not a lot of points in the grand scheme of things, especially with the amount of events left and how the points get cut. So she's someone that could really battle for the podium, which I hope she does, considering how good of an athlete she is. We're just gonna have to see. What I am surprised about on the women's field is the Icelandic women. I feel like none of them have turned up. It sounds really bad, but Annie, Katrin, Sarah, even Helga Daughter. Annie in 10th, Katrin in 11th, Helga Daughter in 12th, and Sarah in 20th place. Sarah is literally on that borderline of being cut. I'm very surprised from all of them considering I had two as my picks to be on the podium, so that's probably not gonna happen. They're not gonna make that big of a comeback, I'll be honest. But I'm hoping that you all try and make it into the top 10. Sarah is going to be very unlikely. She's got to make up 10 places. It's going to be very hard for her, but we're going to have to see. And finally, the team. A team we expected to do well, but obviously not expected to dominate this much. Mayhem Freedom. With three event wins, a second place and a fifth place, after five events, I'll be honest, I think they're pretty much dominating the, the whole event. Obviously, their team has grown and got a lot better. Rich Froning has said in an interview how he feels like he has developed and he's working very hard and he's the best he's been in a while. Trying to show, join their team. Drew, like very good athletes, but not expecting them to dominate this much with Invictus and Krypton being a very good team as well. So there, there are your top three. Mayhem, Krypton and Invictus. Even though Mayhem nearly have a 100 point lead with this new points format, I can't believe it. It's very hard to get that amount of lead, so it just shows how good and consistent they have been. So going into day number three, I wanna see if Noah Olsen can keep up what he's doing and absolutely smash it on day number three. Let's see how he gets on, see if he can beat Matt Fraser. That's a big question, who can beat Matt Fraser? We will see if someone can actually beat him, see if Noah can actually do it. After one event, it's gonna be cut to 10. The point scheme is gonna completely change. When it gets cut to 10 athletes, 100 points for first place and 10 for 10th. It's gonna be very hard. You cannot get a 10th place finish anymore because you're gonna to have to win an event straight after just to make it up. So this is gonna be very interesting and so good to watch as spectators. So I'm really looking forward to what's gonna happen over the next two days. Only thing that's been announced today is the sprint course. 
and that gets cut to 10 athletes. So let's hope that some athletes make it into the top 10. We will see who makes it and see what happens. Guys, I hope you've liked the video. Summarize of day number two at the CrossFit Games. Super impressed with Kerry Pierce and Noah Olsen. Smash that like button, subscribe. Until next time.